All right. Um, so before we start, let me give a brief uh, explanation, like what is what will happen uh, today. So first, uh, first of all, my name is Dong. Uh, I will be your TA for this class. Um, so what will happen today or for the rest of your of this semester is we will uh, set up a Zoom link like this. Uh, we will. I will give a brief introduction of uh, today's lab, and we will. Uh, after that, I will uh, turn this camera. I will. I will. I will filming one of the in-person students who is actually doing the lab, and show you guys. Uh, and he or she will explain all the steps she's doing right now, and you guys will use the data that from from the in-person students to finish your lab report. Uh, that's basically. How we are going, uh, that's basically how this lab will uh, will work in the fall, in the in this semester. So um, before we start this lab, uh, any questions, like general questions for me or for this class? I, uh, if you have questions, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, say it. Especially while while I was talk while, while I'm talking, because I probably will not notice the chat. Uh, on the canvas, uh, on the on the Zoom, so it will be very helpful if you just answer yourself and ask your question. Um, I don't I think so. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, real quick. I was just wondering when, like, the set dates are for and dates and times that our lab reports are due. Uh, that's a good question. Usually, it will do next week, but I'm not sure if uh, it's on next Monday or next Friday. So. Usually, it's supposed to be next Monday, but I think for the canvas set up, they will tell you that uh, they will allow you to submit before next Friday. But I think it's not fair to other sections because our Monday sections will have the longest uh, time period to finish that report. So usually, it should be next Monday. So. I would say next Monday before the lab starts. Okay, sounds fair. And that's like for every week. So like Mondays before, like at 4.29 PM then? Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so for you guys, for this section, the lab with the lab report would do next Monday before uh, 4.30 PM. Okay. But sometimes we have a uh, two weeks lab, which means we, you will do the lab in uh, two weeks, but you only have to finish one lab report. So for the first week of the two weeks lab, you don't have a lab report due. Okay. Um, I, will, uh, I will send you guys weekly email, basically answering some general questions like when is lab report due, uh, things like this. So you don't have to worry too much about this. Okay, thank you. Um, I had a quick question as well. Uh, I was just wondering if we're unable to make your office hours, is it possible for us to email you um, like rough drafts or pieces of our lab reports just if we want some feedback? Um, I, I mean, I don't encourage this thing because think about it, if everyone email a piece of their lab report to me, it, it doesn't make any sense if I still need to grade your lab report. So my suggestion is if you have specific questions, um, I mean, if it, if it's okay if you email a piece of your lab report, but I'm not going to give you like a uh, very specific uh, feedback. So like for example, if you give me, if you, if you show me your uh, calculation, I probably will tell you it's right or wrong, but and I will point out which step you are wrong, but I will, I'm not going to tell you the correct answer. Do you, uh, do you understand what I'm talking about? Because I don't think that will be fair if someone just emailed me their lab report before the due date, and I basically pre-graded it, and then you submit it again. That's, um, I don't think that is fair. And if I said that, if I told you that is okay, I, I will guess mostly, most of you guys will email me before the deadline. So, that will like double or triple my work, my workload. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. I mean, I do encourage you to make the uh, um, 
my office hours and ask questions during that first uh, during that period. If you can't make my if you can't make my uh, lab uh, office hours, it will always be uh, available. There will be multiple uh, office hours for other TAs. You are you are always welcome to uh, join their lab uh, office hours. Okay. Where would you find the link to this Zoom? This Zoom? I think uh, yes, I was having trouble finding it earlier. Uh, I sent you guys the uh, email through Canvas, which which describe uh, the groups and the link. But if you have trouble with that, uh, let me let me send this Zoom link. I'll send it this in the weekly in the weekly. Oh no, you should you should you need to use this link for office hours as well. Uh, uh, I will I will send this link in the in the chat after uh, after I finish this, the introduction of this map. Okay, because I can I'm not really remembering the number, but thank you. I will tell you later. Um, I have a question just to clarify. Mm -hmm. Um, so before every lab, we just need to watch the recitation video and then do the pre lab quiz beforehand. Uh, yes, I do recommend you guys read the handout also before uh, the lab, so you will understand, you will understand like what what is going on for today's lab. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh. So so. Yes. Uh, for the email I sent through. I sent to everyone. It usually go. It always goes you goes to your canvas inbox. So you'd better check it uh, very quickly, especially for all the announcement. I think all the announcement probably will go to your ASU email. But for the email I sent through canvas, that will go to your that will go to your uh, canvas inbox. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, if no more questions, we can start this lab. So, uh, I don't know which is the best angle for this, but I will just give it here. All right, so today's lab is the uh, uh, basic techniques. Uh, the most important thing here uh, for today is telling you, teach you how, how, how to make, how to use pipette. So in the lab, before we touch any chemicals or instrument, uh, wear your gloves. So pipettes is a very, very useful tool in a biochemical lab. Uh, it basically it helps us to transfer, um, it's help us to transfer the small amount of small amount of wo small volume, small amount of liquid. Uh, in our lab, we will have a set. Okay. Uh, we will have a set of pipette, uh, which looks like this. If you watch the, uh, if, I, if you have already watched the presentation video, you should be able, you should be familiar with this. So we have three different types. Uh, if you look at the top, they have three different colors: uh, blue, red, and blue, red, and uh, green. So, so first, first of all, you need to figure out when you're transferring, when you are going to transfer some liquid. The first thing uh, with pipette, the first thing you need to decide is which pipette I'm using. Okay, that is depends on the volume you are transferring. So, with that being said, it is very Important for you to enter, to know, to remember the uh, range of the volume that each pipette can transfer. So, if you look at the top of the of the pipette, I'm not sure if you guys can see clearly here, but on top of it, it shows the name is L1000, and on, on the bottom of the of top of the top, it shows the range that the it can pipette. So, for the blue one. It can transfer 100 microliters to uh, 1,000 microliters. So, if the think about it, if the, if the 
volume, we are going to transfer it's like 500 microliters. You definitely need to use this. But if you want to transfer like 50 microliters, which is lower than the minimal volume that will handle, so you definitely you won't use this one because it will not be uh, applicable. So for the uh, green one, it's L200. If you transfer uh, 20 microliters, I mean, I'm going to grab one side of the pass here. So for the L200, it will handle uh, 200, uh, 20 microliters to 200 microliters. So like I just said, if you have, if you have transfer 50, uh, you can use this one. So as you can notice, the blue one is 100 to 1000. And this one is from 20 to 200, which means it has overlap for 100 to 200 microliters. You can use both of them. Uh, it just depends on uh, your preference. But I will choose, for example, if I want, if I will transfer 150, I probably will choose this uh, L200 because it is more specific. So for the third one as uh, L20, it will handle two microliters to, two to 20 microliters. So it will handle very uh, tiny amount of liquids. All right. So if you, after you finish recognizing, uh, recognizing this pass, the next step is you need to know what is the current volume for the pass right now. So how to read the volume from uh, the pass is uh, if you look at the body of the pass, there are three digits over here. And if you scroll this, it will adjust, you can adjust the, the number on it. So the, uh, basically for all the pass, you will read the volume from the top to the bottom. So for example, right now on this pad, the L1000, in from the top to the bottom, it shows zero, nine, zero, which means it's now, right now the volume is 0,900 microliters. So if I change it to here, it's 082. So which means the, the volume it will handle right now is 820 microliters. That's how you read from the uh, L1000. For L200, it's more straightforward. So it also will read from the top, uh, from top to the bottom, but it uh, is more straightforward because, for example, here is from the top is zero eight seven, uh, which means right now the volume is eighty seven microliters. So basically, it it is what it is. So if it is true, it shows one to one here, that means the volume here is one hundred and twenty one microliters. So that's for um, the blue one. Uh, the green one. So for the red one, it's a little a little bit tricky because it will handle a small amount of volume. So if you look at the top to the bottom right now, it's 185. So which means right now it's holding 18.5 microliters of the volume. So that's how you read uh, the red one. So it is very important before you transfer anything, uh, make sure you adjust the volume to the, uh, to the correct uh, position, uh, correct, correct volume. So that's why, that's how you can transfer a specific amount of liquid, okay? So after that, after you are adjusting uh, the pass to correct, uh, correct the volume, the, third, the next step is how to transfer in, uh, how to transfer in the liquid. Uh, you need one more, uh, one more thing. Which are pipa tips. So since we have three different types of of pipa, obviously we will have three different types of pipa tips. So the blue one is one uh, L, matches the L one thousand. The blue one matches um, the green one matches L two hundred, and the red one matches uh, L twenty. So before, so one notice here is never ever 
for this pipette into liquid without attaching a pipette tips. So, but just uh, attach one pipette tip on the pipette. Make sure your the attachment is close enough, is airtight. Otherwise, if if you connect if you can uh, connect this loosely, when you pipette, uh, the pressure will be will be not not will be different. Will be not specific. That will reduce, but that, that will lead to the um, discrepancy when you're pipetting a specific amount of volume. So make sure you tidy, make it tight, and after that, you push this plunger to the first stop. Um, if, I'm not sure if you guys can see clear. If you push further, you can you can do it. You can you can feel the second stop. But when you uh, when you're pipetting, uh, connect with the tip. Push it to the first. Uh, push it to the first uh, stop, and dip your pipette tip into the into the liquid. Then release the plunger slowly. Okay, you will see water coming up in a in a in a tip. It, it is 800, uh, 830 microliters right now in my pipette tip. So. If we want, so we take liquid from the beaker. For if we want to transfer, for example, transfer the water um, to this tip, uh, to this tube, we just push this plunger to the first step, uh, first stop. As you can see here, I'm not sure if you guys can still see there is uh, still some water or liquid left in the tip. So that's why we need to push further and make sure. You push further to get rid of, um, push further to the second stop, so you can get rid of all the liquid into the into the tube. So if you look at the tip clear uh, closely, there's no water left inside. So that's why we designed the second stop, so you can get out of all, get out of all the liquid uh, from the tip. So after you're using. After you're transferring your liquid, uh, you can eject your uh, the pipette tips with uh, clicking this button over here. So let me do it again for you. So you just push push this button, uh, push this button from the saddle, and it will eject pipette tips. So make sure you eject you toss this pipette tip into the bell head a little bit. Um, all right. Any questions for uh, using pipette? It's, it is very important um, because we basically will use this instrument every single lapse in this semester. Okay. Um, if no more questions, I think we can let the person students uh, Ahmed. Right? Yeah, you can say more. It's easier. What? Oh. oh. Okay, I will add I will add mode to start the part one uh, for today's lab. So the first part for today's lab is uh, quite easy. Uh, it's the measurement of the density of uh, of the uh, of a liquid of a solution of two solutions. So it's very easy because if you want to measure a density of a, of, of a liquid of a solution, uh, you just need to know the mass and the volume. So after uh, after knowing these two. Factors you use mass divided by um, volume that will gives you the density of the liquid of the solution. So we will read. We can read the volume from the pipette directly, and we can measure the mass of the of the liquid uh, using the balance. So that's basically the the, pur the, uh, the purpose for the part one is. Let you guys get familiar with how to use pipette. Okay, uh, so if you no more questions, you can start to work on the first uh, the first module. Uh, do you have your hand up printed with you or no? I have the one. Okay, you can just uh, can take that one. Just 
So just a quick question, just wanted to confirm. Um, are we just waiting until we get the results and we write down the results of what the mass is? Um, I'm just I'm kind of confused on what we actually do or how are we play a role in the lab. Uh, you don't have to write it down because I will uh, collect his result and send it to you. Uh, but I, the, the, what you guys need to do right now is I will just hold my laptop and film him when he do the experiment. I will have, basically it shows you how he's performing the lab. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so the solution, there are two solutions uh, over there. You just grab your pipette, your pipette tapes over there and some tape, some tubes that you are going to use. Um, I think you need eight of them because for each solution, you need to measure for uh, volume. So these are two solutions over here. They are transparent, they are clear, uh, labeled with solution one, solution two. And this is the balance we are going to use. Uh, basically, you will just grab a, uh, you just grab an empty tube and you measure the mass of the tube first, then you zero it. Uh, you don't have to remember uh, the, the mass of the tube, empty tube. You just put it up to tube on the balance, you know, you zero it and you add your liquid in it, you measure it again, that it will give you the mass of your of the liquid. Yes, that's 50. Is it zero? Uh, do you have your map put your amplitude yeah, line? But then I zeroed it. You, yeah, you put it on, put it on the uh, on the balance, then you zero it. Okay. So now you just take it, take it out and add your, add your uh, solution into it. Okay. Okay. Then you write it down. This will be your first data. So the mass for solution one, uh, 50 microliters is 0 0.0496 gram. I mean, if you don't, re if you don't uh, record this, it's fine. I will take, I will take off it and send it to you. Uh, 
Um, uh, you can eject. Uh, do I have to eject it, or can I? Eat? Because we need, we still need the green tip again. So um, that's tip. that's okay if you want to keep it, but I would recommend you just use. Yeah, okay. I, the I mean, I already have, I already have more than enough. I already got. Do I throw the solution in there as well? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, I don't re recommend you put the tips on on the paper um, because uh, it is fine if you are doing this kind of uh, yeah, yeah. experiment. But For sometimes we, yes, sometimes when you do like sterile experiment, it's you yeah. need to keep it clean. Sorry, it's okay. All oh. Uh, yes, because the mass of this tube is different. This was zero point one three zero three. Yep. How much is it? Two hundred fifty. Yes. Uh, let me send the uh, Zoom link again, a uh, Zoom ID again in the chat. Yeah, 
this is a Zoom ID and the passcode is Okay, so the top line is Zoom ID. Uh, the second line shows the um, password. That's solution one, yeah. uh, This is solution two. I think it the same thing for this. So what's the what's the volume we are doing right now? Uh, fifty microliters. Okay, he's doing uh, he's doing fifty microliters for uh, solution two right now. So for solution one, I I bet that fifty, one fifty, two fifty, and five hundred, and then for solution two, I have to do the same. So if some if you if you see some liquid left in the tip, you just eject the tip and re, uh, use a new one. Uh, so that you're good. Okay. Just uh, let you know. Yeah. Thank you. This liquid or an air bubble? I'm not sure. Um, if you're not sure, just redo this. This it should it should shouldn't take so much so long.
I need the another two. My life, your life is more interesting, I swear. Yeah, I think it, you didn't know you did roll it. I did before, too. I think, but I remember the mass of this was one point something. 1.001, so I can estimate that it's 570. Seven. Okay. You got that? Yeah. All right. Uh, as for first part, you can just grab the piece of grab all the uh, chips back. Well, it's my turn. Uh, second part. So, uh, for the first part, I will uh, get his result and send it to you. So, the second part is. Uh, more interesting for uh, the purpose for the second part is basically uh, to show guys how to use the spec, uh, to show something about the spectroscopy. So we use that method, we use the spectroscopy to usually measure um, the concentration of a specific mo molecule in a solution. Um, so how to do this, basically we are using one, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, but uh, we are using one equation, which is here. So, write it down again. So, the equation here is, I think it's speaking now, A equals to extinction coefficient, concentration, the toughness. That's called beer lover's law. So A refers to the absorbance, which we will get this data from the spectrometer. So that will measure the absorbance of your liquid, of your solution. So extinction coefficient is a property of, it's a characteristic of your, of the molecule. It's, it is similar with density or, uh, it's similar with density, it will, it will not, so this number is a constant for a specific molecule. It will not change if you have more molecule. 
in, in a solution. So no matter how many how many molecules you have, you must in a solution, the extinction coefficient for a specific molecule is cons consistent. Okay. So this one C refers to concentration as just the, the as to describe the concentr as the concentration of the molecule. And then L refers to the path length. It means the distance, the light, uh, the distance of your uh, the distance of your solution. So for measuring, and so in our case, for me measuring um, the absorbance of the solution, we are going to use one more uh, one this little metal stuff called cubit. So we will put this, we will put the solution into the cubit, and we will put the cubit in the spectrometer and use this to measure the absorbance. So the passes here as the distance from this side to this side. So it's, so for different uh, different cubit will have different passes, but in our case, the the passes for the cubit is one centimeter. It's one centimeter, which which means L is one cm. Okay. So let's go back to this equation. So there are totally four components in this equation. So technically, if we know the value of three of the factors, we can calculate the value for the fourth one, right? So in, our, in today's lab, we are going to measure the absorbance using a spectrometer. So it means we know this data and we know the concentration because we I gave you we are going to make some dilute we are going to make some solutions with the known concentration. So which means we know concentration data. And like I just said, the path length is one centimeters. One centimeter. So which means we know data of L. So by knowing these three data, by knowing this three value, we can easily to calculate the value of the extinction coefficient. Okay, so that's the pre basic principle for, uh, for the second part. So today, today the molecule we are going to exam is this one called big cut stock A. So the stock, the concentrations. I'm not sure if you guys can see the whiteboard. Uh, so the concent, the stock, concent, the concentration for this stock in my hand is one mg per mil. So which is, uh, yeah. Let me move this. Here. Sorry about the sound. But I think that will make sense to you. That looks better. So, uh, so this stock solution in my hand, the concentration is one mg per mil. Okay. So we are going to use this stock solution to make three different concentrations, uh, which is 12, mic uh, 12 microgram per mil, 8 microgram per mil, and 5 microgram per mil. So the key component of the key concept here is how to make dilutions. So that is very important skill for this master of this lab because usually we will just provide stock solutions. Uh, and you guys need to dilute the stock solution to the working concentration processor, processor uh, following lab, following experiment. So it is very it is very important to know, to understand how to make dilutions. Okay. So if you look at the picture, if you look at the graph I like draw over here, so this part, uh, what this, I mean, move it again, that's more clear. So if you look at this graph, if you, 
what I'm showing here is this one refers to the beaker. Okay. So when we say making dilutions, that means we are going to add some stock solution. So maybe we need add some. This is our stock. We are going to add some stock solution. After that, we need to add some water or buffer. Um, to dilute it. Okay, so the key co concept for making dilutions is understanding or calculating how many, how much stock solution you need to add and how much buffer or water you need to add into the beaker to make it to dilute the stock solution. So, how, so how do we, um, so how do we calculate this? We are going to use uh, this equation I wrote here uh, seems very, it seems okay to me uh, to read. So this equation is C1, V1 equals to C2V2. Okay, so what does it, what does it mean? There are also four components. So C1 is the concentration of the stock solution. So yeah, yeah. So the C1 has the concentration of stock solution. So in our case, it is one meg per mil, which is 1,000 microgram per mil. So this is C1. V1 is the value we want to know. It's we want to calculate. Okay. So we don't know V1. That's it. That is this is our goal. We want to calculate. Okay. C2 is the final concentration. Of the solution. So in our case, it will be 5 a per cow. Let's use 5 gram microgram per mil as an example. So C2 will be the final concentration of the solution. And the V2 is the final volume of the diluted solution. So we can sometimes we just we will make this, we will decide the value of V2. It depends on how much we need. So in our case, today we are going to make. 1.5 mil of the uh, diluted solution. So, which means V2 equals to 1.5, which is 1,500 micrometers. And it really, so the value of V2 really depends on how much you want to make. So, for example, if you need a huge amount of it, for example, you need 500 mil, you need 5 mil, the V2 will be 5 mil. If you need 10 mil, the V2 will be 10 mil. So it really depends. Okay. So, like I just said, we have four components total. We have four factors total in this equation. And we know C1 is stock, it's a stock concentration. We know C2 is five microgram uh, microgram per mil. And we know V2, we make V2, we decide to make 1.5 mil of the slot of the solution. So which means V2 is 1.5 mil. So we know three components already. We just need to can easily calculate the value of V1. Okay. So the calculation steps are here. Okay. So let me do this again. Uh, gives you a more clear tool for this. So first of all, C1, V1 equals to C2. It's a little bit right here. I think this is the best time. Okay. Um, C1 V1 equals to C2 V2. Uh, so we want to know V1. So the easiest way is we remove, remove C1 from the left to the right. So which means on the left, there is some V1 left, and on the right, it will be C2. V2 over C1. Okay. Everybody follow this step. Okay. So the second step is easy. We just insert the data. Um, we just insert the data from the from here to this equation. So V1 equals to C2, like I just said, C2 is the final concentration. In this case, we are using five. We are making five micrograms per mil. So that is your C2 
height ratio, like I said, is 1,500 microliters. So C1 is over here, is 1,000 microgram per mil. Okay, so that will give you the result for V1, which is 7.5 microliters. So that, yes, questions? Yeah, sorry, I just had a question. Why are we putting it in 1500 microliters when the other parts are in per milliliter? Um, that's a good question. So think about it if, because that is related to the final, um, what final unit for this result, okay? So if you change this to 1.5 mil. So the result you will get is 0 0.0075 uh, uh, mil. So, no, I think her question was that you have these two values in the result of my Uh Yes. So, I think. Could um, be wrong. <laughs> so, that's a very good question. Um, so when you do these calc calculations, this unit is not actually related to, so you can, when you do the calculation here, since these two units are for the concentrations, you can easily remove this. It doesn't really matter the unit of, of the volume here. So that will, this unit here will only affect the unit, the final unit you are using, the, the final unit you will get. Okay, so that makes sense. You just use whatever unit you're hoping to get at the end. So that's why I use 1,500 because we cannot pat pat mil, right? So like I just said, the pat pat we are using the unit is the unit is microliters. So that's why I'm using 1,500 microliters over here. So the result you will get is microliter. So if we use mil, we will get mil here. But so. It's not clear how much you need to pat pat. So we need to convert the, the unit from mil to microliters, which is still 7.5 microliters. So the unit you are using here is not, it will not affect the calculation, but it will only affect the final unit you, you can get. So that's a very good question. Okay, everybody clear here? So uh, let's go back to this figures, okay? We calculate the final, the result for VY is 7.5 microliters, okay? Which means, if you go back to this figure, which means we are going to add 7.5, we are going to add 7.5 microliters of the stock. So the only thing we are missing here is how much Water in this case, in this case, you are using water, but sometimes your molecule is uh, dissolved in a buffer, so we are using buffer to that way. But in this time, in this case, we are using water. So the only thing we are missing here is the volume of water. So how to get this is quite strict, quite, um, quite simple, uh, because the final volume. The final volume of the solution is 1,500 microliters. And you add 7.5 microliters of stock, which means the water is just need 1,500 minus 7. Uh, minus 7.5, which will give you 1,492.5 microliters. This is how much water you need. Okay. So for making uh, this concentration stock A, you just need 7.5 microliters of the stock solution and 1,492.5 microliters of water. That will give you 1,500 microliters of the stock, diluted stock A, whose concentration is five micrograms per mil. Okay. 
everybody clear about clear with this? Uh, if you have any questions, ask now because I will leave twelve and eight to you guys. You guys do your the calculations by yourself, and you need to show your calculation steps in your lab for, for this. I just want to make sure everybody understand how to use um, this equation c1 mu1 equals to c2 a2 to do the dilutions because that is really important. Uh, in the following couple couple following labs, you will use this equation. Not. Just, for the second two concentrations, are uh, C2 and V2 the same or are we calculating? Uh, C2 will be changed because the oh, C2, sorry, C2 sorry, C2 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 uh, V2 and C1, I mean. Exactly. We, so the, for, the rec, for the rest of the two concentrations, C2 will become, uh, C1 will be consistent because it's the stock solution concentration. V2 will be consistent because that's the final volume. Okay. So, the only thing different here is C2. You just insert this number to C2, so you will get, you will get different V1. Okay? Do we need to show our calculations in the other two, or if I wrote down the first example, can I just just instantly? Okay. Um, you need to two number. One is, we, one is the volume of V1, the other one is the volume of water. Sorry, uh, so you use this you use this equation, you can calculate the V1. Right. And you need to know how much water you have. Right. So that's the two numbers you need. Oh, okay. So if no more questions, I will let him to start the experiment. Uh, so you, can, you guys can keep watching the film. Um, I have no idea what I need to do next to be honest. Um, so, uh, just come over, come over here. Um, basically, you just grab three different three tubes from here, okay. and I will give you. I will give you the. This is a stop. Okay. So first, the stop. You do the calculations for twelve and eight. Okay. So. Oh, so I know how much H two I need. And how yes. Much, uh, so, but for example, in that case, seven point five microliters is what you need from here. Right. Okay. You just have had seven point five microliters from this stop A into one of the tube. Mm -hmm. Then you know the water, the volume of the water. Okay. You have had one thousand four hundred or something uh, from here. It's the two, the mixer. That will be your stuff. Uh, the first solution, whose concentration is five microgram per mil. Right. After after that, you transfer you transfer that solution from the tube into the cube. Okay. Okay. Make sure uh, get all this ready, and I will bring you to the spec uh, spectrometer to measure the absorbance. Okay. Okay. Um, so you want me to calculate the data for the first correct? Ah uh, yes. So, you, so right now you guys can start. Also, can, you guys can start try to do the calculations for shell and egg to see if you can get reasonable answer. Uh, if you have questions, you can ask. Yes. If I tell you what I got for the second one, can you tell me what's the difference?
good? Yep. Do you need me to do the population and... No, we'll just do the... Sorry, do you need me to do the... Yeah, do you need to, need to do the one for the 7.5? Yes, we're going to use three different concentrations. Okay. Uh, one mil, uh, one mil is is okay, but one point five is more um, safer. I prefer to use. I usually do one point five, um, because that gives you more solutions. This is seven point five. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes, uh, in the lab report, it put 1.5. And then do I add the water to this, to the tube? Add the water to the tube? Yes. We have a kill bracket when it comes to the amount bank. Phase one. Yes, I mean, this is more yeah, so when you are doing this, you need to have had multiple times. Oh, no, no, I know, but I meant the two. The two is like, has a limit of one micro. No, you have to split it one point five. Oh, mine is here. Oh, 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 Um, so what I will do is I will compare ninety-two uh, with the green with the uh, with the blue uh, with the green one. Okay. And I will compare two sure. times of seven hundred, and it will give you one thousand four hundred. Okay, that's fair. Next time. <laughs> that's okay. I mean, there are so many different ways you can have a specific amount of volume. But, uh, I would, that, that is just my way. Uh, just what I would.
Hey, uh, now you finished with that. Uh, I will let you, let you, uh, you can invert it just in case, just make sure you mix it completely. Uh, make sure the color looks like homogeneous. So after that, you transfer this solution from your tube to the cubant. I use the pipette to do that. You can pour it or you use your pipette to transfer it. So now we have three QS available right now. But is that, it, is that enough for doing the measurement? The answer is actually no. We need one more. Um, I've had, we need one more cubats, which is just water. So that will be your black sample. 
um, because for the beer numbers law, the equation A equals to extinction coefficient C times concentration times path length. In that case, the absorbance can is actually only from the molecule, the stock A molecule in a solution. But in the solution, we, we not only we are not we not only have the molecule, the stock A molecule, we also have water molecule, we have the ions the into in the water molecule, such as uh, carbon, uh, such as cation, uh, like magnesium, uh, things like that. So that's why we need a blank sample, which is the Q value with water. So that is, we will measure the absorption from the blank and subtract this number from the rest of your uh, absorbance. So that result will give you the actual absorbance from your stock A molecule. Uh, that is a very good question for uh, why do we, why are we not adding solutions directly into this? Okay, so the answer is we are not mixing anything in this Um I mean, this one is, I don't know, it's plastic or whatever material. So that is, this is chip. Um, so sometimes when you do the actual, um, actual biochemical lab, um, sometimes the material is very expensive. So sometimes that one, uh, for example, in, in my lab, we use uh, a silicon dioxide material, if I remember, remember correctly. So one of the cubat will worth a couple hundred, a couple hundred dollars. So it's very expensive. And sometimes if you mix it, if you mix stuff into the cube within the, within the cube bed, um, you probably will scratch the, the well, uh, the wall of the cube bed. You will leave a scratch on there. So sometimes that will destroy that cube bed because the absorbance will never be accurate anymore. So that's why we need to mix, do the mixing in the tube, then we transfer them carefully into the cube bed. Okay? So, yes, you need water in this cubit. That will be your black sample. How much? Uh, I would say 1.5. Uh, it's just make sure it's full enough. Yeah, just one more. That will be good. Okay, should be fine. All right, let's move to the room with spectrometer. I mean, I can hold the box if you want, if you don't feel comfortable. All right, that's very weird position, but so this guy is the spectrometer that I'm talk I was talking about. So basically, This is the chamber which you, where you will put you will put a sample of QS in. So if you open it, um, if you look at here, this part, this one will be the uh, light of source. So that will generate light, and the light will come from here, goes to here. So at this position, this position will be the, the one sample that will be measured. So which position? Uh, this one. So if you look at the button, if you look at the button over here. So if you click button, for example, I click button number four. Okay. For example, if I click number one, um, this panel will move and it will move number one, uh, number one, well, to this measuring position. So. What we are going to do next is we will insert all the cuvettes into the holder and we click the lead and we just click these buttons. So it will measure, we just click these buttons and it will measure the absorbance for each of the sample. Okay, now you put your samples into it. So make sure, uh, before you put it, wait a second, before you put it, you look at the top, 
Before you measure it, you look at the top, the top of the cubic. Did you see the triangle over here? Yes. Uh, show, show, show the students here. Um, There's like a little groove. It's like a triangle. Yes. So make sure the triangle face to the direction of the light. Okay. So, so over here. Yes. It's not going. Up. Oh, never mind. Yep. So you put the rest of the sample in the same manner. So, like this? No. Let's see. Where is, which, where is your triangle? Here, right here. Do you see there are, some, there are, wall, there are holes on the wall? Uh -huh. Make sure. So the holes is for letting the light pass through. So make sure your triangle fits to the hole okay. on the wall. That makes sense. Thank you. Let's see if they have any questions. Do I have to record it? Or yes, you need to record. You need to record the absorbance, and I will. I will take a picture of your data. Okay. Okay. Four of them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So which which? Okay. I think number one is your black sample. Yes. So just click one and re record the. Um, yeah. Okay. 600 nanometers and then absorbance. Six, yeah, 600 nanometers is the wavelength we are using. Right. Uh, okay, absorbance is 0.043. Yes, that will be your black. Then, Oh, uh, wait a second, I don't think it's moving. Okay. If you hear the sound, that is the sound of the moving. Okay, that's the result. That's not moving. I don't know why. That's the third one. Okay. All right. Okay. Now we get all the data we need for today. You just take this out, uh, dump everything into the liquid waste in the film fluid. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all the data you need. Okay. And then, um, uh, yes. Uh, I'm not, I will show you guys how to process the data later. Uh, we just got the three data points, the absorbance for three concentration of the stock. We can toss it, toss it in the, in the belt in this, in the curve. Um, that, that is what I'm going to talk about. So for the lab report, uh, if you go to Canvas, if you go to Canvas, you can see there is a, I think it's a, a request for the lab report. So you will see two different types of lab report. One is called RDQ, other one is called full lab report. So for the RDQ lab report, which is easier because you don't need introduction, you don't need method, what you need in the RGQ report is R refers to results. It's the result you get from the lab. D is the discussion. Uh, it's a discussion for the results. And Q is the question. So if you look at your handout, there will always be there will always be questions be asked in the handout. So the question section is for answering that question, these questions in the lab report, in the handout. So for RDQ, result, discussion, and discussion questions. So for the full lab report, you need RDQ plus introduction and method. Okay, am I clear?
Um, yeah, is there like a particular format you like? Like, uh, I know in like OCHEM, we had like title pages on formal lab reports and a references section. Is, is uh, are, yes. you need a title, you need reference. Even for the RDQ. Yes, for RDQ, even for the RDQ, you need a uh, title and reference. So if the reference is from the lab report, like information given in the handout. Yeah, you just refer, refer the handout. So most likely you are you will refer to your handout. But if you do get some uh, resources from the website, from the uh, literature researchers, papers, uh, refer to that house as well. Usually you will use the other reference in your discussion. So um, if you don't just ref, uh, just refer just just cite the handout. Okay. So for this lab, we just need the RDQ. Uh, I guess so. Uh, you can double check the uh, schedule or something in the in the canvas. I think we post the requirement for each lab, lab report. I think this one is RDQ. Uh, next one probably is also RDQ, uh, if I remember correctly. But just double uh, double check on the on canvas. Um, for RDQ, let's say I, I mean, part of my results is the calculation, right? Uh, yes. For for example, in this lab report, uh, result will be the first part obviously as the uh, the data you get for probably just to make uh, make a table which lists all the data, which is the volume volume mass. And density. So make a make a chart like this, which lists your uh, mass, volume, density for what solution solution one, solution two, and on the bottom show one example of the calculation of how you calculate the density. Okay. Um, just one tip for you for this part: you calculate when you calculate when the calculation of density, use all of the data and average them. For the density, so if, for example, for one data point, you will get one point. You will get one density. Uh, for for example, 50 microliters, you got one density. 150, you got one other. Uh, 220, uh, no, 250, you got one a third density. So after that, you average all the density. That will give you a specific, more specific answer. That's for part one. So part two, that's a little bit harder. Uh, that is what I, well, that is what I'm going to talk right now. So, um, for the third, for the second part, like I said, you we have three different concentrations. So five, eight, and twelve. For each concentration, you will have a data point. So, you will have absorbance. Clearly, with this equation, a equals to Extinction coefficient times concentration times half length. So obviously, if you have this, this, these three, these three components available, obviously you can calculate the extinction coefficient. So in this case, for example, for five microgram per mil, and half length as one cm. And absorption, for example, here is, let's say, 0.3. I'm not sure. I'm, I don't know this. Uh, the absorbance is correct or not, but just say, let's say the absorbance is 0.3. So, with these three numbers, you can calculate calculate a uh, number for extinction coefficient, right? So, you got extinction coefficient for five microgram, and you use the data from eight and twelve. You can get three extinction coefficients. Extinction coefficient, let's say, um, let's say it's x1, x2, and x3. By average, then you can got, got the specific number of the extinction coefficient. That is fine, but this that is not the way I want you guys to, per, uh, to process data in this lab report. So what I want you guys to do is to make a graph. Okay, 
the x-axis will be the concentration, y-axis will be the absorbance. Okay, so we will have three data points, which is from five microgram per mil, eight microgram per mil, and twelve microgram per mil. Okay, so you will have three data points. Then you plot these data points into a spreadsheet, and that will give you a fitted line. Hopefully, it will be linear uh, because it is supposed to be a linear line. And it will give you a linear line here, and you can get the equation for that line. Okay? Uh, ideally, so that will give, bring up another question. What is the unit form? What is the equation for, let's say, for a line? We, the, the equation for a line, we usually write this in this form, right? So y equals to kx plus b. So y is the, the value of is the value of y, x is the value of x. So k is refers to the slope. That b is the actually the point this line uh, contact with merge with the y axis. So in this case, if you merge, if you in, if you invert this equation into if you fit this equation into a, into a line, which means y will be absorbance, x will be concentration. Okay. So B here will be zero because ideally it will start with zero. So which means B will be zero. They don't have a B. So the question is, what is the relationship between K, which is slope and extinction coefficients? So the answer here is the extinction coefficient will equals to the extinction coefficient times plus lens will be the K over here. But in our case, L, the path length is one centimeter. It's one centimeter, which it will not affect the, the value here. So which means you can say the, the slope equals to the extinction coefficient. But the units are, unit are different, OK? So technically, the K, the slope will be will equals to the, will equals to Extinction coefficient times path length. Okay, so that's the way I want you guys to calculate the extinction coefficient. Okay. So you don't want us to. I I don't want I don't want you guys to do the calculations here, uh, because it's not quite specific. So this way will gives you a way more uh, specific answer for the the extinction coefficient. Okay, questions. So I think that's that's all I need to say for for this lab. Uh, any questions? If you don't have any questions, um, I will see you guys in my office hour. Uh, my office hour is on Thursday, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. And we are using, you will use the same link as today uh, to access my office hours. All right, questions. If you no more questions, I will take I will take a copy of his uh, data and I will send it to you guys later this later today through the canvas email. Okay, no more questions. Cool. Thank you. See you guys next week. I'll see you guys on Thursday. <laughs>